Communication is key for great teamwork and for getting things done quickly. And here we are in a channel conversation. And this is a great place to communicate with all of your teammates that are part of this team. But what it's not great for is a conversation that is directed to one individual or to a small group of individuals. This could be considered noise and may be found as distracting to your fellow teammates. And for that reason, you may want to switch to the private chat area. It's called chat and it's just above the Teams area here on the navigation bar. It has a thought bubble icon. Now we're gonna to go to this area in just a moment, but before we do so, I'd like to show you a couple of shortcuts that may be helpful to you. The first is the search or type a command field at the top. This search or type a command field will be apparent no matter where you're working within the Teams application. So if we click in this area, we have a suggestion to get some command shortcuts. And we also have a history of things that have been performed in this search field before. The first three that start with a forward slash are keyboard shortcuts, chat, keys, and saved. The fourth was a search for the term Teams. If you'd like to see a listing of the keyboard shortcuts that you can use with that forward slash, just type that forward slash in. On the left is the name of the keyboard shortcut, just as you would type it in. And on the right is a description of the action that will be performed. Let's proceed and type the word chat since we already have the forward slash typed in. And then press the enter key. Notice that we have not moved out of the Teams area. We're still in Teams. We're still working in the same team channel that we were in a moment ago. But what we do see in the search field is a way for us to quickly chat with someone and send that message without leaving the area that we're working in in Teams. Hopefully this will make you a little more efficient and productive that you don't have to go switching back and forth to those different workspaces of Teams. So let's type in the name Pierce or select it from the suggested list as you see it here which is what I'm going to do. And then it takes the mouse cursor over to the right where you can type a message. To send it, select the right facing arrow. A notification appears that it's sending the message. It also lets you know you can press enter to view this in the chat area. Once this notification goes away, it's letting you know that it has sent the message. Another way for you to quickly start a message is to select the command that you see here to the left. This square with what looks like a pencil inside it is new chat. By selecting this, it is going to switch the view from Teams to chat, just as you see it here, and indicate in the recent area that you're working in a new chat. Over to the right is the to field where the mouse cursor is blinking for you to type in the name of the person that you would like to send this chat to. I start to type the name, I can select it, and I can continue on if I'd like to add additional people to this conversation. If there's been a previous conversation with these individuals, it will find that conversation and show you the previous message or messages. Let's go back to Teams one more time. Those are two quick ways that you can start a new chat. Another way that you can start a new chat is to use the keyboard shortcut Control N. You might be familiar with this keyboard shortcut. If you're in Microsoft Word, it starts a new Word document. If you're in Excel, it starts a new Excel workbook. Well, in Microsoft Teams, Control N, N for new, let me press that now, starts a new chat. Again, it takes us back to the chat area, starts a new chat, because it saw this other new chat that we were just in, it's recommending that this is the chat that we need to work in. But we could clear this if we need to start something new with a different individual or a group. Okay. Now let's move over to this conversation that we have going on with Pierce Boyd. Just a couple minutes ago, Heather promised that she would send the file that Pierce needed. Remember that conversation happened up here in the search or type of command area where we used that quick way of chatting. Well, what we typed in that search area, there it is. So it becomes a thread in that existing conversation if it finds one that you have with that individual or that exact group of individuals. Let's go ahead and send that attachment that we promised. In the type a new message area, we'll type our message. We could select the paper clip to attach a file by going out and browsing OneDrive, that's OneDrive for Business, or browsing the hard drive of your computer, finding the file and attaching it that way. Or if you wanna make the application window a bit smaller, 
select the Restore Down icon in the upper right corner, and then locate the file either on your desktop, or you could open File Explorer and find the file that way. Once you do find the file, what you're going to do is you're going to grab that file by left-clicking and holding it down and dragging it to that conversation area that I was just typing in. Now, as I drag it, notice that attached with that file is a red no symbol. As I get to where it says drop your files here in that conversation area, that red no symbol becomes a blue plus sign that says copy. Release the left mouse button and it is going to upload that file along with the message that says here are the sales. You'll also see a green bar moving that will indicate the upload process. Let's take a look. There's the green bar. It's uploading the file. Once the file has been uploaded, the green bar goes away and we are ready to send this message. Let's go ahead and make Teams full screen again by selecting the restore icon in the upper right corner. And if we're ready to send this, select the paper airplane in the lower right corner. It's sending the message through. Pierce is now able to see this message and respond by maybe giving it a thumbs up or typing back to us. He's also able to work with this file in several different ways. Notice to the right of the file, three dots. Pierce can edit this within the Teams app, open it in Excel, which is going to be the desktop version, more recent versions being Excel 2016 or 2019, or open this in Excel online. He can also download it or get a link to the file. In addition to this, if you look here at the top where it says conversation, files is where the file now lives. If Pierce has some questions, or if Heather even has some questions, she may wanna call Pierce or have a video call with Pierce as well. The same capabilities that you may have had if you worked with Skype for Business or Skype for Business Online are available here. So if you have a webcam, you can add a video call to this. If you have a microphone, you can add an audio call to this. You can even share your desktop or add additional participants as needed to the conversation. And that is how you can have a private chat with one of your teammates or a small group of your teammates.